Now, why is the rate of testing for the coronavirus so much lower in the U.S. than in some other countries? This weekend, President Trump said this. Anybody that needs a test gets a test. We, they're there. They have the test. And the tests are beautiful. And next, we're going to hear from Vice President Pence, who already said this. We don't have enough tests today uh, to meet uh, what we anticipate will be the demand going forward. But then, look, look at this from the columnist and historian Max Boots saying, uh, my son played basketball with a friend who now has 104 degree fever. Is he suffering from coronavirus? No one knows because almost no one can get tech tested. He's written this article in the Washington Post and it details how South Korea, with a population of over 50 million, has conducted close to 200,000 tests. He then cites the Atlantic magazine, which has looked at America. It can only confirm 1,900 tests in the U.S. out of a population of over 320 million. So over six times more people, 1% of the number of tests. So what's going on here? Well, there are different ways you can look at this. This is a graph from Business Insider. It compares eight countries. It shows Italy testing 826 people per million people. The U.S. is testing five people per million people. That's according to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC as it's known. That doesn't include, though, all testing facilities. So the testing rate could be higher, but we just don't know. And the U.S. government doesn't know either. Here's the BBC's John Sopel pointing out the U.S. has a health sector, not a health service, which is why you have the U.S. health secretary saying, I can't give you a number of how many Americans have received a test because many have received a test through hospitals or public health labs. Now, that's true, but it's only been true since very recently. The former U.S. Food and Drug Administration official tweeted last week, look, since the CDU, CDC hasn't authorized public health or hospital labs to run the test, right now the CDC is the only place that can, so screening has to be rationed. Now, I should say states are now authorized, but they're doing this from a standing start. That's one of the reasons these test numbers are low. It is hoped, though, by the end of this week, four million tests will be available each week, but of course that doesn't fix the problems that there have already been. Look at one, one virologist at Columbia University who says, I think we could have probably controlled this if we had effective testing. And many uh, experts would argue there just hasn't been enough of it, whatever the problems the president says. And of course his problem is this is a man who rose to power successfully using polemic, passion and identity, perhaps above being truthful or accurate, and is now faced with a virus which is oblivious to his attacks and his distortion. So I was mentioning John Sopel, this is an excellent analysis from John on the BBC News website on why this could be the president's greatest test yet. We should add that the White House says the president hasn't been tested, very much like the vast majority of Americans. Well, we heard from the president a little while ago. We're prepared and we're doing a great job with it and it will go away, just stay calm, it will go away. We want to protect our shipping industry, our cruise uh, industry, cruise ships. Well, let's talk about that cruise ship I was mentioning earlier. It's uh, docked in Oakland in San Francisco Bay, and they've been kept.